Good morning. Today is July 11th, 2019. <clears throat> I would like to say a few stories about Yoichi. Yoichi and I had one of the closest relationships I ever had in my entire lifetime. The first time I met Yaichi was when we were much younger. He was on my block where his grandparents lived, lived. and he was a young, we were young. I see this young short kid <clears throat> that looks a lot like me. So I go over to him and, and introduce myself to him as my name is Yudalei Blonder. I, I live here. And from that moment on, we had one of the closest relationships ever. The first story that comes to mind was when he was a young kid in camp, running around and talking English to everyone. We didn't really understand what he was saying. It was funny because that was everything. The sense of talking to each other. It was just fun to see how Yoichi was back in the day in camp when he was much younger. Another story comes to mind is that when Yoichi always wanted to go out to eat, he'd always call me during the day, say, Glebe, let's go out to eat. Let's go to Estihana. And I'd tell him, I can't leave. I can't leave work. He's like, stop with the work. He's like, just let's go. One time, kept on persisting. So one time I decided to take him out to Wolf and Lamb on Coney Island. And after that, I said, Yoichi, let's go visit someone. Let's go visit Benish Mendel. He's like, nah, <clears throat> nah, I don't feel good. I'm starting to have a coughing attack. Let's go home. So I said, okay, let's go home. But if he would have been feeling well, he would have been able to go visit people. He was just that type of person that if he would have had a second he would have done anything he could do. He always wanted to be part of a hawk. He was the biggest hawker I ever knew when it came to that. He always needed to go to parties and stuff like that. Another story comes to my mind is that a few years ago, <clears throat> I wanted to go to my boss for Shabbos. And so did Yoichi. Yoichi wanted to come upstate. So he calls me and he asks me how I'm going, getting upstate. I, I say, I don't know yet. <clears throat> it's Monday, let me figure it out. He called me up Thursday, I said. He asked me, how are you getting up? I said, I have a ride, I'm going to my sister. <clears throat> and then I'll go to my to my boss tomorrow. <clears throat> I come to my boss and I see Yoichi. He pulled up with Yehuda Burko. I don't know how he got Burko to come. He I I think he called him about a million times to convince him to come. But that was Yoichi. When he wanted to we're, when he wanted to go somewhere, he'd call, call all his friends 
and persist make that person come with take him wherever he wanted to go I think this was two years ago but when he first had his first major coughing attack when I was with him <clears throat> I told him to put on his pulse socks and it was the numbers were low so I said let's call let's call Renan he said no let's wait so we waited about 10 minutes and after 10 minutes still no good so I decided you know what let's call Renan I called Renan he's like what's going on I'm like listen this is the story I need your help to <clears throat> to stabilize Yehi. So he's like, okay, give me 10 minutes. Okay, he comes and make sure everything is stabilized. And then we get to go, we leave. Another story comes to mind is that I was going to Lakewood for Shabbos to Simcha Shein. And he calls me up, Yaichi calls me up, and says, how are you getting to Lakewood? I'm like, I'm not so sure yet. Um, he's like, okay. So he, he says, I could take you. I'm like, really? You could take me? It's not, not sensible for me. I said to myself, but after talking to Simcha, and he said it's okay as long as he wears his oxygen. So he calls me up Thursday. He says, when are you ready? I said, not before 8. Like, oh, he's like, he wanted to leave at 5 o'clock. I'm like, that's too early. Around 8 o'clock, he says, are you ready? I'm like, yeah. Okay, so I get into his Lincoln. And I think he knew that since I was in the car, he drove with his oxygen on. He drove normal. He didn't drive fast. He didn't drive slow. He knew I was in the car and he knew I was nervous. We get there about 9.15. Everything was perfect. We didn't have any issues. But I was so scared to go in the car with him that I didn't know what to do, except just diving. That's what, that's what I did. I think when Yaichi was in the hospital now, the last time, a lot of people were there when he first got there, when I got there. And I decided, you know what, I'm going to wait. And... We're gonna, I'm going to have a private conversation, conversation which I'm going to keep to myself with Yaichi. And after that conversation, we decided to make a chat. And you know, Yaichi was all about his chats, WhatsApp groups. He had a million WhatsApp groups with a million people on it. So I think the maximum number of people you can have in a group is 256. So when he, when he opened this group, he added 256 people. I said, Yaichi, what are you doing? It's going to go crazy to, from 256 people. So he's like, what should I do? So I'm like, delete the group, recreate the group, and add 10, 15 people. And if we need, we'll add more. When I took my shift in the hospital, my one and only shift, it was not, it was already not good. He was in and out. He was, in, he was up, sleeping, up, sleeping. But he needed to eat. But he couldn't. 
But me being me, I had to listen to his mother. So I gave him a piece of some type of cake and he ate it. I never saw a number so low. Never ever in my life did I ever see such low numbers. He was in pain from all his coughing and all that. It just wasn't yaking. My last physical words to him were by yaking. I never ever thought those were going to be my last words. It was when I was leaving my, my shift from the hospital. I said, Bayechi. I always thought that Hashem would bring the proper refor to him. I always thought that Yechi would would live past me, and I was in Eretz last week. And I just went to Shlomo. And I was supposed to be there for five minutes. I was just crying out, just crying to him, saying, why, why, why did you take Yaichi so early? No one's going to believe me, but... Shlomo said, it was his time to, it was his time. He, he did his thing for the last 24 years, time for him to go back up to Shemayim. I never, ever looked at my WhatsApp between Yoichi and I. After being Menachem Avel, I decided to go through my chat between Yoichi and I. Every little fight I knew wasn't a fight. It was a joke. But Yoichi was such a serious person that he took everything so, he took all our fights too serious. That was Yoichi. Yoichi, in a nutshell, was the, was the most, I, th I want to say, He was very funny, but he took stuff a lot very serious. He texted me every day to see how I'm doing. Most of the time I was able to answer, I'm doing Baruch Hashem, doing good, how are you? I just, I... If I ever missed a text from Yehi, Yehi, please forgive me. I didn't mean to miss it. I really didn't. I can't comprehend that you're not here anymore. Every day, it's a hard, hard thing for me. May Yoichi be a Melitz Yoisher for all of us, his friends, his family, all Klal Yisrael. And we all know that Yoichi will be, is up there looking down on us, 
and yeah, and this is just hard to believe that it's a month already. And WWYD, what would Yoichi do? He'd be happy. He would never want us to feel sad. I mean, he'd be a militia for us all and Claudius all and his friends and family at Mayor of the Asher